Welcome to On My Shelf. Today I'm talking about the middle grade book Planet Earth is Blue by Nicole Pantelikos. And I'm not sure if that's really how you pronounce her last name, so I apologize if it is not. Planet Earth is Blue is an upper middle grade book that follows 12 year old Nova. She is extremely excited about the launch of the space shuttle Challenger. So it takes place in the 1980s. She has a sister who has promised to watch this launch with her. Nova is a neurodiverse character. She is nonverbal autistic. And in her life, she's a foster kid as well. In her life, her teachers and foster families have kind of not recognized her potential. And the only one in her life who has recognized that potential is her sister, Bridget. Unfortunately, Bridget has disappeared. So Nova is kind of looking forward to this space shuttle launch at the same time she's looking forward to her sister coming back because her sister promised that they would watch the launch together. So the story is, is about Nova learning how to exist on her own, how to make friends on her own. She has a foster family who starts recognizing that she is more than other people thought she was. So she, she starts learning how to just be herself on her own without her sister Bridget. And it's, it's a coming of age story that was just really sweet, which I always really love to read. This is Nicole's first novel, her debut novel, and it was published in May 2019. I'm always up for historical reads in the middle grade realm that don't feel out of touch with reality, but showcase some universal struggles, which I felt like Planet Earth is Blue did a really great job of doing that. Even though Nova is kind of a non-traditional character in that she is neurodiverse, she also had some struggles with family and learning how to love herself that felt, felt very universal. I really loved the character of Nova and the way that Nicole showed her differences and the kinds of ways that her brain worked and the loops that she would get stuck on. I felt like it was a very authentic way of showing a neurodiverse character. It was also a very heartwarming story and there were places that made me laugh, places that kind of made me tear up a little bit. And it was it was one of those stories that regardless of who Nova is with her ne neurodiversity, I feel like every kid can learn something from the story, whether it's kids struggling with somebody they've lost who they love, like her parents, or re reconciling memories that they have and, and helping work through some of those memories. And, and even just the coming of age aspect, trying to learn how to love yourself and step out on your own and know that you can make it by yourself. I feel like that's a really important thing to communicate in middle grade stories, knowing that we are separating from the people in our lives, whether it's through death or divorce or just regu regular growing up. We're separating from these people in our lives and learning how to stand on our own. And I feel like Nova's story was just one of those really sweet, heartwarming, inspirational stories that help kids of all circumstances come to see themselves even in Nova. As I've mentioned before, the character of Nova was extremely lovable and just very dear during the reading of this story. Interspersed into the story were memories that she had of her sister Bridget and some of the instances that they were together, some of the things Bridget taught her, some of the ways that Bridget believed in her. And I felt like that was a really, really good thing to round out Nova's character, but also to provide a little bit of a mystery, like where did Bridget go? And so those layers began unfolding as the reader journeyed with Nova through her story. And I, I felt like it kept them, it kept a reader engaged and going all the way through the story. If for only finding out what happened to Bridget. But of course, it was more than that. You want to know what happens to Nova as well. The space shuttle launch provided a lot of tension. People who are familiar with the history, they know what's going to happen. But because Nova was looking so forward to this launch, you kind of felt this angst in your soul because you knew that she was so invested in seeing these astronauts go into space and you know what happens to the space shuttle and just, just wondering how is Nova going to react to this. So it was a really great suspenseful element of the story. I felt like it was used really well. I do always wonder in stories about 12 year old girls um, about the period piece. And I know that's a weird thing to wonder about, but 
autistic girls have periods too. And it, it wasn't necessarily a missed opportunity, but I feel like anytime we can kind of normalize that part of a girl's life, it just makes it more comfortable for them in the long run. And so even just a mere mention of she had her period one day or something might have been a good addition to the story. But that's just me. I'm just one reader and I'm always looking for ways to make things like that a little more palatable to the world. What I loved most about Planet Earth is Blue is that readers get to spend some time in the head of a person who is different. I am not nonverbal autistic and it was really, really valuable to just spend some time in that headspace. And we're always talking about how, especially in the middle grade realm, in the YA realm as well, books are windows and mirrors. So for some, we can look through the window and experience something that's that we don't normally experience in a day, but we learn how someone else relates to the world, or we see ourselves in a mirror. And I think it's this book is one of those that's valuable on both sides of that, because every kid today probably goes to school with someone who is neurodiverse. It's very helpful for them in building empathy to understand the way those different brains work. So I felt like it was just a really great representation of a brain that works differently. I feel like it's it's just critical for young people to be able to have stories like that and also for nonverbal autistic kids to see themselves in a story. It's it's not done nearly enough and this one was a really really great representation. It also reminded me to embrace the quirkiness of the characters that I write. Sometimes I have a lot of weird quirky habits and collections and things like that. And sometimes we like to gloss over some of those things to make a character more palatable. But the problem with glossing over those things is that there are kids out there who have the same collections or the same habits. And so when we give our characters permission to be quirky and weird and out of the ordinary, we give our readers permission to be that way as well. And we make the world just a more diverse, more beautiful place. So I was grateful for the reminder that no matter how neurotypical I want to make one of my characters, I'm not necessarily neurotypical. And so it's it's nice to be able to have that freedom to open up space for some of that strangeness, if you want to call it that. So as authors, we can let our characters be themselves because in letting our characters be themselves, we give kids permission to be themselves. That's it for this week's On My Shelf. If you want an author's perspective on books, TV shows, movies, and sometimes even music, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.